Hello, my name is Scott Gilpin, and I'll be presenting about a mesenchymal stem cell potency assay using a proteomics approach. So I'll first introduce you to what mesenchymal stem or stromal cells are. I'll be talking about them in use of cell therapy and what interferon gamma is. Next, I'll present about the current potency assay used, the proteomics used in this study, and then the study itself. So mesenchymal stem cells are present in most tissues. They're readily isolated and expanded from Warden's jelly, adipose tissue, and bone marrow. They can be grown in vitro as a plastic adherent cell with fibroblast-like morphology, and they can differentiate in vitro as osteocytes, chondrocytes, and adipocytes. These cells are important because they have potent immunosuppressive capabilities. So these are what they look like in vitro, and you can see the fibroblast-like morphology as they're kind of stretched out. This figure shows that when induced, they can differentiate to the acrocytes, the osteocytes, and the chondrocytes. Because they have these, this potent immunosuppressive ability, there are many possible mechanisms between their interaction between MSCs and immune cells. I want to highlight first prostaglandin E2 or PGE2. It's a biologically active lipid that suppresses T cell receptor signaling and the enzyme IDO. IDO degrades tryptophan, which is an essential amino acid, and when it gets degraded, it inhibits T cell growth. Because of this immunosuppressive capability, it can be potentially used to treat those with autoimmune disorders. One such clinical trial evaluating this is called MESCAMPS. MESCAMPS is a mesen, it's called, it stands for mesenchymal stem cells for multiple sclerosis. In multiple sclerosis, there's, an, there's inflammation destroying the myelin sheath in neurons. It is thought that MSCs can be used to dampen down this uh, inflammation that's producing the symptoms. It's important to know how potent or how immunosuppressive these MSCs are when treating people with MS. There are many steps along, along the development of a good stem cell therapy. Potency assay falls along the second step and specifically optimized because, for example, in the MESCAMS trial, the more immunosuppressive the MSCs are, means the more potent they are, and the more optimized they are for the therapy. Interferon gamma plays into this because it can trigger MSC modulation of the immune system. It can essentially, essentially activate the MSCs and their immunosuppressive ability. The current potency assay we use is called a CFSC potency assay. It uses CFSC, an intracellular fluorescent dye, as in put into peripheral blood mononuclear cells, such as lymphocytes or monocytes. We then add these into pre-grown MSCs in a well or dish, noting that MSCs adhere to the dish, so you can later remove the PBMCs and analyze them without removing the MSCs. They're used you can use these two uh, in, to figure out what the potency is because as the PPMCs divide, the dye will divide along with them, thus diluting. For example, if this is a cell that is not being su uh, suppressed, it will divide twice. Therefore, since it's divided twice, there's now only 25% of the original amount of CFSC than there was in the original. If it then is suppressed by an MSC, it may only divide once. Therefore, the more it's suppressed, the more dye will be detected. This method is not the best because peripheral blood mononuclear cells come from a different donor. And from donor to donor, there will be different PBMCs and therefore adding variability to the asset. The results from our studies suggest that using a proteomics approach may provide a more direct method to measuring components. So what is proteomics? Proteomics is a study of the proteome, proteo, or all the proteins in the cell. It's useful because it's able to directly quantify the amount of proteins within a cell without relying on mRNA. There are different methods of proteomics with their own advantages, but I'll be focusing on shotgun proteomics and specifically tandem LC MS MS. So the basic steps of tandem LC MS MS are first to extract the proteins from the cell. Then you do an enzymatic digest, fragmenting the protein into various peptides. These are then run through a 2D liquid chromatography. 2D meaning that you run them through two columns that separate from two different properties. Then you run them through a mass spectrometer, which, can, which ionizes the samples and measures the ions. The data is processed by computers, and then the results come out as a list of the proteins and their relative intensities. So on to the study. Our objective is to develop a new MSC potency assay using proteomics. The hypothesis was that a 24-hour treatment of interferon gamma 
the MSCs will increase the relative intensity of IDO, the protein I mentioned before, and prostaglandin E synthase, the enzyme responsible for producing prostaglandin E2. The method we used was a pair sample design. We grew, for each subject, we grew two samples of MSC. One got received for the 24 hour treatment of main appearing gamma. We then harvest them with triply select and random proteomics analysis. Overall, we found, we found over 7,000 proteins, over 5,000 were found in molar samples, and over 200 were significantly, up, or were significantly upregulated in the interferon treated cells. This shows the average relative intensity for IDO. As you can see, it was not detected in controls, but detected in large amounts in the interferon gamma treated cells. Similarly, prostaglandin E synthase was not found in controls, but found in large amounts in the interferon gamma tree cells. There was another protein that followed this trend, bone, more, bone marrow stromal antigen 2. Bone marrow stromal antigen 2 is interesting because it's only expressed in response to stimuli from interferon signaling pathway, potentially making it a marker if an MSC has been activated by interferon. So the findings from the study show that proteomic analysis of MSC stimulated by interferon gamma has identified proteins that are upregulated with the activation of immunosuppressive function. They support the development of a proteomic space assay for immunosuppressive potential of a given MSC. Some future directions for this is to confirm our findings, to try a different method of proteomics, target proteomics, and specifically SWAP and use alternative molecules to stimulate MSC immunosuppressive abilities such as interleukin-17 or lipopolysaccharide. I'd like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Wall, the Children's Health Research Institute of Mantua for the funding, all the help provided at the Mantua Center for Advanced Cell and Tissue Therapy and Regenerative Medicine Program at U of M. I'd also like to thank the Manitoba Center for Proteomics and Cystic Biology for performing the proteomics analysis. Thank you.